uh, Jeremy, uh, clashes and arrests uh, have taken place in just the past couple of hours. Uh, how is it looking on the ground? Well, it's been an extremely chaotic evening. Uh, I'm in Xiongwan right now. This is one of the areas where pitched battles between the protesters as well as police took place not too long ago. I'm wearing a helmet right now. This is a helmet uh, to just to protect myself. So you can almost still smell the tear gas in the air because police did fire several rounds of tear gas at protesters uh, not too long ago and the, uh, they claimed that the protesters were throwing Molotov cocktails at them. So you see lots of people here wearing face masks as well, gas masks, because you can still smell uh, traces of the uh, uh, tear gas in the air. So what we're seeing today is, is an escalation of violence between both sides. Uh, what we're hearing right now is the protesters are retreating back to uh, Cheta Garden, where, which is where they were earlier today. Now, the protest started at 3 p.m. local time today at Cheta Garden. Uh, that's a site that's authorized by uh, the police for a uh, rally to be held. Uh, organizers of the rally today had asked for uh, permission to march from Cheta Garden to Sunyasa Memorial Garden, uh, about two kilometers west of Cheta Garden, but that was denied by the authorities. So, what we're seeing today is an illegal assembly, and if caught for doing so, uh, protesters could face up to five years in jail. Uh, so, you know, the, the permission was not granted for protesters to march on to Sunya Sun Garden. And instead, they, 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 they took a very uh, surprising decision to march across the island. Uh, they went over to Causeway Bay in the east. They also marched over to Saiwan in the west. That's near where the Beijing Liaison Office is. And that's also where uh, you know, the Beijing Liaison Office was also where it was vandalized by uh, protesters just last week. And that that's an act that, which got the Beijing government very upset. So today, lots of security around that area, and that's also where uh, police fired rounds of tear gas at protesters. So what we're hearing right now, at least a dozen people have been taken into custody. Uh, once again, this is an illegal uh, protest, so uh, protesters could fail, face up to five years in prison. Yeah, I understand. Now, now, this is the eighth straight weekend of protests, and things have been escalating as we go along this past week. Uh, how are the tactics changing, uh, not just among the protesters, but the police as well, over this time? It, it appears that using tear gas has become the new normal here in Hong Kong. Now, yesterday in Yunlong in northern uh, Hong Kong, police also used uh, tear gas to disperse the protesters. And once again, we're seeing very chaotic scenes right from the heart of Hong Kong Island today when protest, uh, police officers use tear gas to disperse the protesters. Uh, so what we're seeing is an increasing cycle of violence on both sides as well. We also saw protesters hurling rocks as well as uh, other objects at the police officers, setting up makeshift barricades across uh, streets, not just in Xiongwan here where I am right now, but also in Causeway Bay to the east of Hong Kong Island. So um, what the protesters were dispersed over Hong Kong Island, that's, uh, you know, said by some to be a new tactic to, uh, to, uh, to spread out the Hong Kong of uh, police officers as well. Uh, that's to make it harder for them. Uh, they're putting on face masks to avoid easy identification. They're also stopping people from taking pictures. Uh, they, I saw them shouting at people to delete pictures after they saw them taking pictures. So clearly, uh, they, they know, the protesters know that because this is illegal, they want to protect themselves. They're asking, you know, they don't want to be identified. So where does, it, where does it all go from here, uh, particularly since uh, we haven't heard from Carrie Lam and Beijing it can't be happy seeing these pictures week after week? Beijing certainly can't be happy. Uh, in fact, tomorrow, the Beijing's top policy body for Hong Kong and Macau, the Hong Kong Macau Affairs Office, is holding a rare press conference at 3 p.m. local time. That's the first time they'll be addressing this uh, protest uh, since it started two months ago. So we're waiting to see what uh, the, the, the office will say. Uh, but. It, at the start of the protest, Beijing actually remained pretty silent on uh, what's been happening here in Hong Kong. But in the last two weeks or so, uh, state media has taken on an increasingly shrill tone. They've uh, started criticizing uh, the protesters here. Uh, state broadcaster CCTV also took the rare step of uh, criticizing the uh, protesters. That's usually only taken for very uh, uh, political situations, uh, and it's a very rare situation as well. Uh, but here in Hong Kong, uh, civil servants are holding a rare 
rarely on Friday to uh, ask the Kerry Lam administration to address some of the protesters' demands. But it's hard to see how the Kerry Lam administration can actually, uh, uh, you know, address what, of, what some of the protesters want. Among other things, uh, they wanted the uh, government to withdraw the extradition bill. Uh, the Kerry Lam administration has said the bill is dead, but it's not withdrawn dead. But above that, they also want Ms. Uh, Kerry Lam to uh, resign, to step down, and they also want a greater democracy here in Hong Kong. So it's hard to see how the Kerry Lam administration can meet this, uh, de these demands by the protesters. So uh, there's still no end in sight to these protests, which have taken on an increasingly uh, violent turn in the last two weeks.